Welcome back, everybody. You are watching MTG Cracked Open, and boy, do I have a special treat for you today. I went to my LGS, my local game store, and I picked up two of the new Commander 2020 products. Today, we are going to be cracking open the Timeless Wisdom Commander. This is Gavi, Nest Warden Commander. So let's crack this open and see what is inside. It says there should be... Braylon, Shabraz, Herald of the Forgotten, a deck box, uh, 100 cards with 17 new ones, and 10 Dull's Head tokens, plus 4 legendary foils. So let's see what we got inside here. Crack this open. the box off to the side. We've got a deck box with our cards inside. But first, I wanted to showcase the oversized card, foil card of Gavi. Now this is definitely oversized. As you can see, it is about the size of my hand. Standard uh, MTG cards, probably about the paw, maybe a little bigger. I'll show the two side by side once I uh, open up the deck box and grab Gavi. For the prices, I will do any card that is over 50 cents. Just because it's a new product, just came out a couple days ago, the prices are still going to be high. Those prices are expected to drop. So if you guys want to, maybe in a couple weeks, close to a month... <laughs> I can do a where are they now and show the prices of the cards once again. All up to you guys. Leave a comment in the comment section below if you think that's a good idea. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That helps me. It helps me know you guys are interested in the content I'm created. Also, one last thing. Please comment on the video if you like it, dislike it. Any comments about how I can make these videos better. Always looking to hear from fans of these videos. All right, Gabby, what do you have in your deck? Let's find out together. So I'm just going to put the oversized Gavi down here on the ground. And let's grab this deck box. So this piece of paper right here tells you what the deck is all about, the rules of commander, so on and so forth. I'll probably read this later just to, so I know how to play the deck, what should be done with the deck. Just show it off a little bit. On the back side, it shows you the other commanders, the other possible commanders. So you got Gavi Legendary, the Akeem Soaring Wind Legendary, and Braylon and Shabraz as the partner. Now, each of these decks these Commander 2020 products has a partner in it. So it comes with a spin down to keep track of your life. Interesting, it stops at 21. Ah, other side, got it. First time opening one of these core uh, Commander products, so. It's a learning curve for me. And what, the, what is this we have right here? This white piece of... Just a, just a blank piece of paper. Okay. Alright, so now we're getting into the actual deck. So this is the full 100 card deck right here. Just some uh, popular magic formats. But let, is, let us see what is in here. I grabbed some sleeves just so I could sleeve up the foil uh, legendary creatures right away. Just because I don't want them to get damaged. Sorry if I found, sound a little sick. I'm a little stuffed up this morning. Man, this pack is not easy to open. That's for sure. 
Try not to damage anything. Anything of that sort. All right, now we got it open. So let's take this first half, put it down, and let's grab this second. So the first card we actually see is Gavian. So look at the beautiful foiling on that. Let me grab a sleeve. Just so we don't damage Gavi. I got brand new Ultra Pro Eclipse sleeves. Let's see how they look with the foiling. I mean, the foiling gets lost a little bit, but it's very well protected. So we got Gave here, who is our commander. And Gave says, you may pay zero. Zero rather than pay the cycling cost of the first card you cycle each turn. So that's not just your turn. That's everybody else's turn. You can pay zero on the first card you cycle. Then whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 red and white dinosaur cat creature token. So every time it's your turn, you draw a card for draw phase, you activate Gavi, you're creating a 2-2 dinosaur cat creature for free. For free, that's crazy. And you still have all the mana that you built up to play actual cards. That is awesome. The next legendary creature, foil, oh my god, these foils are beautiful. We've got Akeem, the Soaring Wind. This is a legendary bird dinosaur. It is flying. Whenever you create one or more tokens for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token. So if you made that 2-2 two, two dinosaur with Gavi, now you also get a 1-1 one, one white bird creature. So that's already two creatures for free if you just have both these cards out. Insane. Let's just sleeve that one up. And now we've got our partners. So we got Braylon first, beautiful foiling. You partner with Shabraz, who is right here. Oh my God, the foiling on that shark is insane. So Braylon is partnered with Shabraz, Shabraz is partnered with Braylon. So what partnering is, is when one of these creatures enters the battlefield, you can put the other one into your hand from your library. And Shab Braylon says, whenever you discard a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Braylon, and it deals one damage to each opponent. Shabraz says, whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Shabraz, and you gain one life. So every time you cycle, Braylon and Shabraz are going to get a plus one, plus one. You're going to deal one damage to each opponent, and you're going to gain a life. <laughs> Then you can play a, pay a red, where it says target shark gains trample until end of turn, which would be Shabraz. And you can play pay a white or a blue for target human gets flying, which would be Braylon. So they go back and forth, especially with cycling, where you're drawing cards and discarding cards constantly. And then if you have your commander out, Gavi, you can do it for free. So that's free plus one plus one counters. I'm going to sleeve both of these guys up. And we can get right back to this opening. I expect this to be a longer video today just because it is 100 cards. I want to explain them a little bit. And this is my first time seeing them myself. So I, w I do want to learn about the cards for when I play this deck. Alright, so it looks like now we go into our double-sided tokens. So we've got the Dinosaur Cats. How cute they are. Oh my goodness. So dinosaur cat on this side. You got the white bird tokens on the back sides of all these dinosaur cats. So you got bird and dinosaur cats. We've got spirits. Oh, we got a spirit. 
and a treasure. Spirit, it's a treasure. We got soldier to elemental. That is an awesome looking elemental. Holy cow. And then we got a different elemental. Or different elementals, sorry. So two different elementals into a kraken and an angel. Oh my goodness. Wow. They really, uh, there's a really lot of different tokens in this build. So insect to drake. Human to Drake. Wow. Talk about so many different tokens. So we got a human soldier and a soldier. Two, th two elementals, an insect, spirit, four dinosaur cats, four birds, a Drake, two Drakes. Angel and Kraken. That Kraken looks pretty cool. It's an 8-8 eight, eight though. Like, that's crazy. And then Soldier to Elemental. I like that Elemental. That's a cool looking Elemental token. And then we have Spirit to Treasure. Those are some... That's a lot of freaking uh, tokens right there. So next it looks like we're starting our land. So we've got Ash Barons. Tap to add colorless, and it's got a basic land cycling. So you can pay one, or if you've got it, it's free. Discard this card, search for a basic card, and put it into your hand. Basic uh, land. We got the Azorius Chancery. Enters tapped. Return a land you control to your hand, and then you can tap for white and a blue. So that's pretty good. It's more. It's a bounce land. That's what these are. Bounce lands. This is a Boris bounce land. And then we've got Command Tower. You can tap it, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. We've got the Desert of the Fervent. Enters tapped. You can tap, add a red, or you can cycle it for two. So this, these are cycling lands. We have Desert of the Mindful and Desert of the True. So one of each color in Gavi's colors. Oh, there's another, another cycling land. Drifting Meadow, another one, Forgotten Cave. Um, is it Boiler Works? This is a bounce land as well. And then we got a cycling land and the Myriad Landscape. What does Myriad Landscape say? Enders Battlefield tap. Okay, tap to add colorless. Two in tap, sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type. Put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Wow. That's a pretty good ability. We got the Mystic Monastery, which is, enters tap, but it adds one of our commander's colors, blue, red, or white. We've got the Reclory Tower. That says you have no maximum hand size and you can tap to add colorless. We got a cyclic land, we've got a cyclic land, cyclic land. So now we got Temple of the False Gods. This is a two, uh, sorry, this is a tap, add two colorless, but you can only activate that ability if you control five or more lands. I don't know how I feel about that, because say you get this off the draw, and you can't play it until turn six. I don't know. And now we got basic islands, basic mountains, and now we got the Crypt Trilobite. Ooh, what is this? So Crypt Trilobite enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Okay. You can remove a plus one plus one from it and add two colorless mana. All right. You can spend this mana only to activate abilities. And you can pay one in tap, put a plus one, plus one counter on Cryptic Trilobite. So say you paid four mana, put two plus one, plus one counters on it. You could remove one, have two colorless, use one of those colorless just to put another one, plus one, plus one counter on it. And then you have one colorless floating. That's pretty good. 
Then we've got the Dismantling Wave. For each opponent, so this is for three mana. For each opponent, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Okay. You can cycle for eight. Now remember, if we have Gavi out, this is free. Doesn't matter what the casting cost is for cycling, it's zero. When you cycle Dismantling Waves, destroy all, all, including yours, artifacts and enchantments. Wow. That is crazy right there. So back to where we were. We were at Herald of the Forgotten. So this is an eight mana cost. Six and two one. Flying. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, return any number of target permanent cards with cycling abilities from your graveyard to the battlefield. Holy cow, what a late game card. You can only cast this at the beginning of turn 8 if you play one land. Maybe you've got some ramp to help you get it out earlier, but holy cow. If you're playing one, maybe two cycling cards per turn, you're going to be burning through your deck for one. For two, if you have this card in your hand and it resolves, all of those cards coming right back to the battlefield. That is insane. I wonder what the ruling would be for spells, however. So like our uh, dismantling wave here. It's got cycling ability. So if it comes back, would it trigger the ability? I don't know. I'd have to look up some ruling on that. Herald of the Forgotten. What a card. Now we've got the Crystalline Resonance. For two and a blue. Whenever you cycle a card, you may have this card become a copy of another target permanent until your next turn, except it has this ability. So say your opponent has this disgusting 8-8-10-10 creature, and you got this enchantment. You can cycle a card, have this become that creature permanent. It could be anything. This could be Ember Cleave. This could be O Stone. This could be anything until your next turn. You really wouldn't want something with abilities, you would want something with uh, big stature. Because it doesn't have... Maybe it does have those abilities. I don't know. I don't know. We've got the Ethereal Forager. It says Delve. Each card you exile from your graveyard while casting this spell pays for one. Okay. Flying. Whenever the forger attacks, you may return an instant or sorcery card exiled with this card to its owner's hand. So when you cast this, you want to be exiling all sorceries and instants to reduce that mana cost. Then, every time he attacks, you get one of them back. That's pretty crazy. We got the fiery... Guardianship. Two and a blue. If you control a commander, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost. So if you have your commander out, this card is free. Counter target non-creature spell. Someone's got a board wipe coming, you got your commander out, you're like, ah, hell to the no. I said, hell no. Get that shit out of here. Fierce guardianship. Now we've got the Agitator Ant. Two and a red for a 2-2. Two -two. This says, at the beginning of your end step, each player, remember, each player may put two plus one plus one counters on creatures they control. Goad each creature that had counters on it this way. Until so your next turn, those creatures attack each combat, if able, and attack a player other than you, if able. So this is great early game, but when it comes down to late game and it's a 1v1, all those creatures that got the plus one, plus one and have goad now can attack you. So they may have a 2020, you know, we're talking 15-15 creature at the end of the game. 
if you get this out on turn three. But we've got the Spell Spire, Spe Spell Pyre Phoenix. This is a five mana, four, two flying. When Spell Pyre Phoenix enters the battlefield, you may return target instant or sorcery card with a cycling ability from your graveyard to your hand. At the beginning of each end step, if you cycle two or more cards this turn, return Spellpire Phoenix from your graveyard to your hand. So this is a card that's just going to keep coming back unless it's exiled. Wow. That's crazy. And now we've got the Shirley Bagisaur. Shirley Bagisaur is a three and a red for a three, three says whenever you discard a card, it doesn't have to be cycling, it's just anytime you discard, put a plus one, plus one counter on Shirley Badgesaur. Whenever you discard a land, create a treasure token with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana. Whenever you discard a non-creature, non-land card, Shirley Badgesaur fights up to one creature you don't control. That's crazy for a 4-4. That's a lot of abilities. Now we've got... A Chroma's Vengeance. This is 4 and 2 white. Destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Talk about a board wipe. Or you can cycle it for 3. Now this is a card that's had a lot of talk around it. The Astral Drift. And it says, whenever you cycle Astral Drift or cycle another card while Astral Drift is on the battlefield, you may exile target creature. If you do, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So if someone, it's it's a flicker. So if someone has a board wipe coming and you want to keep Gave out, you can cycle a card because that's it. You can cycle at instant speed. So you can cycle. That'll trigger Astral Drift. You can target Gave. Gave will leave the battlefield. The board wipe will go. And Gavi will come back. You will have the only creature on the battlefield. That's crazy. And it's any time you cycle. So say you were, you were attacking. Someone put a huge creature up against you. You can just cycle at instant speed. Bounce it. And comes back at the end step. That's, that's, that's insane. All right, we're on our next pile here. So we've got Decree of Justice. Double X. Two colorless and two white. So minimum, we're talking six mana. And you create X, four, four white angel creature tokens with flying. Or you can cycle it for free if you have Gave. And then just pay X and create X, one, one white soldier creature tokens. I like the uh, cycling ability a lot better. Oh, we've got a mythic here. Okay. Hiding mythic. Descend upon the sinful. This is a six mana, four and two white. It says exile all creatures. And then you have delirium. Create a four, four white angel creature token with flying. If there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. Wow. Exile all creatures means they're never coming back. Never, never. There's a lot of rares, actually, in these spots. So now we've got the Eternal Dragon. Five and two white. It has flying. It's a five, five flying for seven mana. But you can pay five and return it from your graveyard to your hand... And you can activate that during your upkeep. Or you can plane cycle. So you can discard this card, search your library for planes, reveal it, put it into your hand. So there's a lot of ways you can get mana if you're getting mana screwed. You can cycle, look for it. There are certain lands where you can cycle, automatically get a land. Then you got the bounce lands. There's a lot of ways to get land. So you should never be mana screwed with this deck. Now we've got the hoof prints of the stag. It's an elemental enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, you may put a hoof print counter on hoof prints of the stag. Okay. 
can pay two and a white, remove four hoofprint captors, and create a four four white elemental creature token with flying. That's crazy. So with Gave, you could be drawing one, two cards a turn. And it's whenever you draw a card. So even if you do it on your opponent's turn, you're still drawing a card. When it comes back to your turn, you can already activate this ability. That's crazy. Literally one go around the table if you're playing commander of all a uh, total of four players. You cycle on your each of your opponent's turn, that's three cards. Your draw phase, that's four. You can do this once per turn. Create a 4-4 angel token. It's crazy. Now we've got Sun Titan. I noticed there's a lot of high casting cards, unless I just haven't gotten to the low ones yet. We got Sun Titan, who is four and two whites, another mythic here. It's got Vigilance. It's a six 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 mana for six six vigilance. Okay, when it when it whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with CMC three or less from your graveyard to the straight to the battlefield. Holy cow, that is a powerful card. Next, we've got the Curator curator of Mysteries. It's a 4 mana, 4-4, four, four flying. When you cycle, whenever you cycle or discard another card, scry one. So you always know what you're getting when you're cycling. Now we've got Drake Haven. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. Just one. If you do, create a 2-2 blue Drake creature token with flying. The amount of creature tokens you can create... If you have this, Gave, and the uh, Akeem out, for one mana, you can create three tokens. One mana, three tokens. Insane. Next, we have New Perspectives. When New Perspectives enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Okay. As long as you have seven or more cards in hand, you may pay zero rather than pay cycling costs. So even if Gave didn't make it onto the battlefield, late game, Gave is too expensive, you can pay this, play for this. And if you have Reclory Tower out where you have no maximum hand size, you can just pay zero for your cycling costs. Crazy. We got the Nimble Obstructionist. We got Flash and Flying. So it could be a random blocker, because it's got flash. Or when you cycle it at instant speed, it can counter an activated or triggered ability you don't control. You got that O-Stone. Always going back to the O-Stone. That's about to blow up the world. Nimble obstructionist. You just be like, yeah, no, nah, I don't need this no more. Cycle it from your hand. Doesn't trigger. Now, it only O-Stone would still be on the battlefield. It would just stop it for that turn. But, it would still prevent it for a turn. That way, you got your team, your players, your play group can find better answers. We've got the Portal Mage. The Portal Mage enters the battlefield. During the Declare Attacker step, you may reselect which player or Planeswalker target attacking creature is attacking. So this is you pick one creature. I noticed that. You can redirect, essentially redirect, one creature that's coming at you. That can make or break the game right there. Oh my god, I didn't even know Chandra was hiding in this deck. We got the Chandra Flame Caller. Four and two reds, four loyalty. So six mana for four loyalty. Plus one, create two, three, one red elemental creature tokens. With haste. And then you exile them at the beginning of the next end step. But every turn, you're creating two, three ones. And they have haste. Excuse me. And they have haste. So you can attack as soon as they're on the battlefield. That's an automatic six damage going towards someone. They either gotta throw creatures in front of it, or they gotta take it, and that's six damage. Now, for zero, you can discard all cards in your hand, then draw that many cards plus one. Okay. So, say you got five cards, discard all the cards. You got 
you know, Braylon out whenever you discard a card. Plus one, plus one. Boom, you discard five cards. Braylon's got plus five, plus five. Like, the synergy between all these cards is crazy. The great thing about Braylon is it doesn't say when you cycle. It says when you discard. A lot of these cards say when you discard. It doesn't say when... A lot of them say when you cycle, but some of them say when you discard. Or when you draw a card. So, like, this would apply to all those cards. And then the X ability, minus X. Chandra deals X damage to each creature. So, say you got knocked down... You got Chandra on the battlefield. She's still got maybe like six, seven loyalty because you used her quite a couple times. But your whole board state got wiped out. Chandra can deal X. So if you'd say, I I'm going to pay X. X being all her loyalty. Six, seven. Each creature is taking six, seven damage. That's crazy. Next we have is the Tectonic. Reformation. This is a great card in this deck. Not a lot of lands have cycling. This says, each land card in your hand has cycling for one. Okay. You got Gavi out at zero. You got lands you don't need, or you have a hand full of lands. Now you can get rid of them. Now it looks like we're getting into our multicolor cards. So we've got a Sphinx. For six mana, six four, flying. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, you may draw a card. Holy shit. Have some freaking card draw for that. Next we have is the Mercurial, Mercurial Chemister. You can, so it's a five mana for two three. Okay. Pay a blue, tap, draw two cards. All right. Red, tap, discard a card, and this card deals damage to target creature equal to the discarded card's CMC. Alright. <laughs> like, damn. Oh, we've got a Niv-Mizzet in here, too? Oh, this deck is loaded. Niv-Mizzet the Fire Mind. Six mana, four, four, flying. Whenever you draw a card, so remember, we're going to be drawing a shit ton of cards, because of Cyclone. Niv Mizzet deals one damage to any target, and you can just tap him to draw a card. That's ridiculous. Oh my god! The Locust God! This is a very sought after legendary card. Locust God. Four, a blue, and a red. Four, four, flying. Whenever you draw a card, a lot of these. So, you have this, you have Niv Mizzet, you have Shabraz, you got Gavi. You're just cycling cards, drawing cards. That pumps everybody, deals damage, creates tokens, like. Holy cow, this deck's got a lot going on to it. Whenever you draw a card, create a 1-1 one, one blue and red insect creature token with flying in haste. When you can pay two a blue and a red. Draw a card, discard a card. When Locust God dies, return to its owner's hand. So if Locust God goes to the graveyard, he comes right back to the hand. At the next end step. So board wipe happens. Okay. End step. Boom. Locust God's back in my hand. What? The only way you can get rid of Locust God is by exiling it? What? Damn. Locust God. Pretty powerful right there. Now we've got the Ar Abandoned Sarcophagus. You may play... You may cast spells that have a cycling ability from your graveyard. Excuse me, what? If a card that has cycle has a cycling ability would be put into your graveyard from anywhere and it wasn't cycled, exile it instead. So if you have um, cards on your battlefield that have cycling ability, they die, they get exiled. But that doesn't count for like Locust God or anything else. They wouldn't be ex exiled. It's just your cycling ability cards. That's that's wow. So at that point, if you had this on the battlefield, you want to be cycling first, and then you can just play it out of your graveyard. Honestly. Ridiculous. We've got the Fluctuator. Two mana, okay. Cycling abilities you activate cost up to two less to activate. Okay. Most cycling abilities cost two. 
So if you have this and Gave out, the first on everybody's turn, you could be cycling two cards for free. If you're cycling two cards for free on everybody's turn, by the time it comes back to your turn, you have three dinosaur cat creatures. Tokens. Then if you got everybody else out, you got one one thopters, you've got Shabra's going up, you've got Braylon going up, you've got a Kim going up. Like the amount of tokens this generates, this deck generates is insane. This is going to be a super long video today. I'm probably thinking about an hour. Sorry for the long video, guys, but I want to make sure we go in depth with this deck. Make sure we understand exactly what's going on, what the pieces are going together. Because I'm already at like 30 minutes. We still got all these cards to go. So maybe, maybe I'll start flying through it a little bit, bit more. So we got the Psychic Crawler. Psychosis Crawler. It's equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Now we're back into some lands. So we got the Exotic Orchard. You can tap, add one mana of any color of that a land an opponent controls could, produ could produce. So an opponent has red, you need red, you can tap this for their red. We got the Hostile Desert. Uh, tap it for colorless. You can play two exile land card from your graveyard. It becomes a 3-4 elemental creature until end of turn, still land. We got a cycling land. Uh, okay, that's just a tap land. Uh, this is a pain land. Deals one damage to you. This is just a land. Mountain, 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 plains, plains, plains. Now we got some artifacts here. So we've got the Bonders Ornament. Can, this is a three mana artifact. Can tap. Okay. Add one mana of any color. You can pay four and tap. Each player who controls a permanent named Bonders Ornament draws a card. All right. We got the Arcane Signet. So this is like the Command Tower. Since it's an artifact, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Now we've got the signets. So we get first the Azorius signet, two mana, one in tap, add blue and white. The Boris signet, two mana, one mana in tap, add. So if you have um, the Trilobite out, remember you can remove a plus one, plus one counter and have two colorless. You can use that one colorless to plus the uh, Trilobite again, and you can use the other one here to get two more mana. So you're getting two mana for free. Free two mana. Crazy. Boris Signet. You got the Commander Sphere. Same as the others. Tap, add one mana of your color, com color in your commander's color identity. You can sacrifice this to draw a card. And we've got the Is It Signet, so they give you one of each Signet. That's good. We got Soul Ring. Oh, everybody's favorite commander uh, mana generator. One mana, tap it, add two mana. Crazy. We got the crystal here, which has cycling on it, but it can tap for one of each uh, one of our commander's colors, blue, white, or white, also known as, I believe, Jexai. We've got the Valiant Rescuer from my core here. So these must be all like Korea cards now. Yeah, okay. So these are, so those are all the commander. Oh, sorry. This starts the Ikoria cards. The rest of them were all the commander products. So now we're back just in regular uh, Ikoria. We got the Valiant Rescuer. Whenever you cycle another card for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Bora, Boon, sorry, not Boron. Boon of the Wishgiver. Draw four cards. Or you can cycle this. The Neutralize. Counter target spell for three mana. Or you can cycle it. Ominous Seize. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seize. Remove eight foreshadow counters from Ominous Seize. Create an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token. Holy cow. I'm just thinking about all the card draw we have in this deck. Thinking we can do it if late game on everybody's turn. 
two turns, maybe less, have it each turn, like, create a two rounds of the table if you do it once per turn, okay? You're probably going to be doing it more than once per turn. You get an 8-8. Eight, eight. That's crazy. We've got the Reconnaissance Mission. I'm not even going to try to repronounce that. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. It's like, what, for two? The Rooting Moloch Lizard. When Rooting Moloch enters the battlefield, exile target card with a cycling ability from your graveyard. Until end of turn, end of your next turn, you may play that card. So you have two turns to play the card. That's pretty cool. It's got cycling on it. You got Savi, Thunder Main. When you cycle a card, you may pay two. When you do, Save deals two damage to target creature and gain two life. I don't know if I like that. If it was two damage to anything, that would be much better. But to two damage to target creature, that's usually not a lot to kill them. We've got the Zenith Flame. Zenith Flame for two uh, red and a white. Zenith Flame deals X damage to any target and you gain X life, where X is the number of cards with a cycling ability in your graveyard. Great late game card right there. We got the Martial Impetus. Get to uh, two and a white enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and is goaded. Whenever an enchanted creature attacks, each other player that's attacking one of your opponents gets plus one and plus one until end of turn. This would be something I think you'd want to put on yourself, because it gets plus one, plus one, and then whenever your creature attacks, each other creature that's attacking gets plus one, plus one. Pretty cool. Psychic Impetus. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, you scry two. You got the shiny impetus, so that was the psychic impetus. We got the shiny impetus, enchant creature, goad. Uh, whenever enchanted creature attacks, you create a treasure token. Cast out, getting down to the last couple cards here. Cast out, flash, whenever cast out enters the battlefield, exile target non land permanent and opponent controls until cast out leaves the battlefield. Or you can cycle it for one. Spirit Karn. Whenever a player discards a card, you may pay one. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit token with flying. We got the Hieroglyphic Illumination. You can pay four mana and draw two cards, or you can cycle it for one. We got the Vizier of the Tumbling Sands. You can untap a, another target permanent, and you can, or you can cycle it for two. When you cycle it, untap target permanent. So if you're playing against um, the other commander I have, Kalamax, who wants to be tapped to copy spells, you can just be like, oh, you attacked with Kalamax? Yeah, I'm going to tap this at instant speed and untap your Kalamax. Sorry, not sorry. We got Windfall. Sorry, piles are sliding. I'm just going to leave it for now. Windfall. Each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. This is great for Shabraz and Braylon. You discard five cards. Cool. Braylon gets plus five plus five. Person with the most cards has seven. Shabraz gets plus seven plus seven. You just made a 10-10 Shabraz and a, what did I say, five? So that'd be a 8-8 eight, eight Braylon. 1818s right there. Jeez, total. Windfall. Lightning Rift. Whenever a player cycles a card, you may pay one. If you do, it deals two damage to any target. That's awesome. Slice and Dice. Slice and Dice deals four damage to each creature. Damn. When you cycle it, it may, you may have it deal one damage to each creature. That's cool. And I think our last card in this deck is the Migratory Root. Three... Yeah, last card in this, in this uh, deck. Migratory Root. Three, a white and a blue. Create four 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying. 
Or it's got basic land cycling. Discard this card, search your library for a basic, basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This deck seems stacked. Tune in tomorrow for the cracking open of the Arcane Maelstrom, or should I say, Calamax, the Storm Side. Come back tomorrow to see what is inside of this Commander 2020 product.